Today, I want to get into a moment where Suga flashes the middle finger and what happened there. I want to get into rumors of Sa Sang's hurting Jimin, rumors of Jimin and Rose together at the Met Gala, and then we have Jimin posted in an idol's photo. So, hey, dumb this is Dave Desai. Hate it or not, make sure you're subscribed with the notification bell on. Grab your dumplings, hey, spilling mug merch, and let's go. Some photos have recently come out of Jimin's appearance. These things always come out at a weird time because the event would have already ended and then the photos are finally being posted. But at this point, these celebrities would have moved on and the media is talking about the new event. And then there's just so much going on, it becomes a bit overwhelming. But that's just how the cookie crumbles. When one thing happens, 50 more things happen. Recently, you might remember hearing about Jimin attending Tiffany and Co. They are a huge jewelry store and Jimin was announced to become the global ambassador for them. So what does this mean for the idol? Well, of course, you have things like some money thrown your way, billboards, campaigns, and the idol's face everywhere. But aside from that, it also means the idol will get invited to exclusive events and expensive events that only people with extremely deep pockets are able to attend. For example, things like the Met Gala. However, I don't think Tiffany & Co usually gets to the gala, but I will talk more about the gala later. Jimin was at the Tiffany event with many big names, and one photo that ended up going viral was a photo of Camila, Bruno, and Haley, and Jimin was spotted immediately. You could see him in the back there, and people were definitely talking about spotting Jimin throughout all the photos and videos of that night. Jimin was considered one of the main events, and you could definitely see him through a lot of the photos and videos from that night. What I find funny is that the majority of Jimin fans who were sharing these photos probably had no idea who any of these girls were or even cared about them, but were just sharing it because there was a sliver of Jimin. That is so funny to me. And then from a lot of these photos, armies were trying to predict and see exactly what Jimin was doing that night. And to be honest, these events are always weird. You try to mingle and see if you know anyone and then try to talk. If someone comes up to you, you obviously talk to them and then take pictures and try to network. It's always been tough for BTS members to really get their foot in the door and network in America because they don't speak English. So for example, if Jimin wanted to get to know Hailey Bieber a bit better and then maybe secure a Justin Bieber collab, it would be harder to do it that way. It would only be done through the management talking to each other, whereas maybe someone from Blackpink would have an easier time getting to know Hailey, taking her out to dinner, and then eventually meeting Justin. It was fun to see all of the people that Jimin could and possibly interact with. Jimin also met a very popular Japanese comedian. Her name is Naomi, and she talked about how she felt like Jimin might not have remembered her because they only worked together once many years ago. And Jimin remembered, and they both took a photo. This idea is a bit confusing to me. If I'm going to be honest, people don't forget. If you're working on a project with someone and it's not just a one hour project, y'all had a meal together and everything, it's quite difficult for you to forget. Even 10 years later, you might just randomly remember the project and be like, oh wow, I wonder how they're doing. So I'm glad they got to reunite and have a picture together. I thought these moments were cute and I wanted to talk and share some of the more recent Jimin photos that were posted. Of course, there are are the super sweet and lovely moments. We also have a lot of moments that are not as sweet, but might be satisfying. You might know that Suga recently had a tour and he is believed to be in New Jersey and New York. He was doing a bunch of songs and of course there were definitely going to be some BTS songs in the set as well. Suga did the song Cypher Part 4. This was on BTS's older albums and songs and back then it was very rap heavy. So the rap line actually had more lines then and took over more than they do now. And this is natural as that's just how the trend cycle of music goes. And why groups tend to be more popular than solos is because a group might find it easier to transition to a new type of music and make either rap heavier or lighter to fit with the trends. But that is just a side note. The song Cypher is about not letting the haters bring you down and acknowledging that the noise the haters are making is simply a noise. BTS doesn't make as much music like this now because they simply don't get the same amount of hate. Don't get me wrong, they get a ton of hate, but they're also globally famous now, so the hate they get seems to make a 
lot more sense and not abnormal compared to their success. Whereas back then, they weren't at this huge level of success yet, so for them to get so much hate actually is a bit unusual, and people were just hating for no reason. The members wanted to address those haters, and this was one of those songs. Suga's always been good about addressing haters in such a savage way. I also want to say it's fairly expected as well. Every single new person on the scene and new person that gets a following very quickly will be met with a lot of hate very quickly. And BTS has always had a somewhat explosive growth. People tend to not understand why this new kid on the block is getting all this attention, and they get jealous to say the least. When Suga did Cypher at his concert, he also flashed his middle finger to show the audience that he does not care about the hate. The internet went feral with this because the boys barely ever really address the haters this publicly and people tend to see the boys as super innocent and that's just not the case. They are normal human beings and they do read and know what is being said about them. They are also allowed to get upset, but God forbid they lash out or feel trapped and want to scream because then the media will have a field day and say that Suga or any BTS members were being rude at that moment. And so as an idol, you're taught to never break always be happy and pretend to just play off rude moments. So I'm glad that BTS has songs like this as well as songs like So What that they can play or quote when the haters comment or whatever. I'm also glad that Sugar showed that he is not going to just bow down to these haters, but he is fighting back and letting them know he doesn't care about the haters and what they have to say. It's literally impossible to care what others say and if you are doing nothing wrong, you have to know that and be confident in yourself and let that carry you. It was so refreshing to see and hear about Suga performing his solo album. We do react and have a great time watching Suga's music videos and songs over on Patreon. There's a $1 tier right now that is open. I hope to see you there. I will link all of that in the description. It's also been quite refreshing to hear about rumors of Jimin's Met Gala appearance. There's a lot of misconceptions with the Met Gala that I want to clear up here. I'm friends with someone who is a higher up at Condé Nast. They own Wired, Vogue, etc. So this is what I know about the Met Gala hosted by Vogue. The gala is a charity event first and foremost, so anyone attending has to either be sponsored to go or they pay for it themselves. The goal of the event is to raise money. Individual celebrities can buy a ticket to attend the gala, but that is more rare. Tickets are not usually bought by the individual, but bought by brands like Dior, Chanel, etc. And then you have companies like Instagram, YouTube, etc. that invite the faces of their platform or wherever they want. Those brands and companies buy a whole table at the gala and the table has a certain number of invites. The brand and company can invite whoever they want. When you're a designer brand, you're obviously going to see the celebrity wear solely that brand. And then the look is then approved by Anna Wintour. But the guests aren't necessarily approved by her. It's whoever the brand wants to bring. So in order for any celebrity to go, it actually has nothing to do with how famous they are. If the celebrity decided to never do endorsements and just sing or just act or whatever, they will never get invited to go. BTS has never been to the gala previously because they weren't a part of any brands. And this is why you would see people who are less quote unquote famous that, that attend. I believe LV only worked with BTS after the gala, so they wouldn't get invited through LV. Jimin, Rose, and Jenny were actually rumored to be going. Jimin would be going with Dior, I think, and I don't know who Jenny would go with, but I believe Rose would go with YSL. Now, this is speculation that these idols are going to attend because Vogue keeps that list very secretive. It often gets leaked, but literally no one even at Vogue knows the list until very close to the event. But people already had their speculation. People were saying that Jimin and Rose must have hung out and talked and spent some time together, but this is all speculation. I think it's funny that once the headlines dropped that Rose and Jimin might be going together, some people were already upset and dating rumors started to fly everywhere. People were then concerned if Jimin was going to be okay at the gala or if Rose and Jimin were ever going to be spotted together. I can almost guarantee you that the two idols would likely never cross paths and they may even try out very hard to not even interact with each other at all because the two are literally not going together. 
if they were going, they're literally with two different designers. I also want to say and emphasize that this is a charity event. The event is not really about the celebrities. The event is to raise money for the Metropolitan Museum of Arts Costume Institute. So keep that in mind. Whatever any of the idols wear, it's not really about that because I was seeing a lot of people saying that if Jimin's outfit doesn't kill, they'll slap the stylist. And it's not that serious. It's not the point of the event. So many of these fans feel like Jimin being there is proving a point, but that is so irrelevant to the point of the gala. And I hope people can see the big picture. Not everything is about clout and views. Let me know what you think. Make sure you check out my Patreon for more videos linked down below. Thanks to this lovely comment right here. Love you, bud.